So I wanted to do a little mini series on sed because I think it's an interesting little command line uh, Swiss Army knife and kind of knowing all of the neat little utensils inside of it uh, can be handy in a pinch. Not they're not necessarily all always useful. I mean, how often do you really use the nail file on your Swiss Army knife? And you probably have a better one, you know, because I know you all file your nails, but. Anyway, said has purposes that are that are useful, and other purposes probably where you wouldn't pull it out and use it. But kind of knowing the ins and outs of it will help you make the best use of it in the most situations. Um, so I have a list of commands that I want to go through. This is pretty exhaustive of all the commands in said, and there's no possible way that I'm going to cover this in one episode. So I'll need to do more than one uh, of these series, and I'm just going to cover a very short chunk in this one, kind of the bare minimum basics of said. Um, and I'm just going to try and cover these first four lines here um, so we can illustrate that using said. I'll just pipe that to said and say dash in first four lines print. Okay, so let me explain what I just did there. The dash in uh, flag in said basically tells it to don't don't put any output out. So if I just pipe something to said and have open clo close quote, it operates basically the same as cat would. But if I give it the dash in flag, it's not going to print anything. Um, this is this is essentially the same as doing dash in p where the p command explicitly prints the current line. <clears throat> so let's break this down. I mean, it's probably getting confusing already. And the best way for me to break it down is probably to show you kind of a graphical illustration of how this is working. So I'm going to use vim to do that. Uh, just imagine this side on the left is our input and this side on the right is our output. Okay, And there's kind of this other magical thing within said called the pattern space. So this one in the middle I'm going to call the pattern space and that's the area in which or the memory in which said operates all of its commands. So when I operate the command said open quote close quote basically what's happening is said will take the first line of the input put it in the pattern space operate all the commands in between the quotes on whatever's in the pattern space, which in this case is nothing. And then by default, it will delete what's in the pattern space and print it to the output, then move on to the next line. That's default said behavior. Um, if I give it the dash in flag, basically all that does is it suppresses the default printing to output. So it'll still operate all the commands in the pattern space, but it won't by default print to the output. However, if I say I do dash n and feed it a p, once it copies this line into the pattern space, um, it'll operate the p command, and what the p command does is prints whatever's in the pattern space to the output. So that's kind of explicitly telling it to print to the output, but then it's not going to, by default, print what's in the pattern space out. It'll just delete it and move on to the next line. That being said, what do you think will happen if I feed said p without dash in flag? If I don't give it the dash in flag, then it will copy the line into the pattern space. It will explicitly print that line to the output. And then it will operate the default behavior of deleting the pattern space and putting it to the output. So basically what you get is two copies of every line. And I can prove that to you. So you get two copies of every line. So you kind of have an understanding of how a basic command like p works. Uh, another example is the d command. And the d command will just delete whatever's in the pattern space and move on to the next line. So if I did this, it would copy this to the pattern space, operate d, which deletes the pattern space, and move on to the next line. Pretty boring. Um, you can also separate commands with a semicolon. Um, you may not have known that you see a lot of people using dash the dash e flag like this which would also work this op also operates these commands in succession 
um, but it's a lot simpler to write it like this. Um, the dash E flag is probably more compliant over multiple systems, but this is pretty common in, in modern versions of SED, so you probably aren't doing much of a gamble to use the semicolon. Um, this particular example of D semicolon P will actually not do anything um, because D is a special command in that after D all the rest of the commands are ignored which kind of makes sense right because if I copy this to the pattern space and then I delete everything in the pattern space it's kind of in a sense saying okay we're done with this round of commands move on to the next one right um, if I did PD then it's copying this line to the pattern space it's explicitly printing it out and then it's deleting what's in the pattern space so once we get to the end of the command list and want to do the default of printing what's in the pattern space to the output there's nothing in the pattern space to print so that's kind of how the succession of commands in said works and it can get quite compl complicated to be honest but it can be confusing but once you kind of wrap your head around how the commands work in sequence and what exactly is going on with the pattern space that is the key to unlocking the powers that be in said and probably the the main command that people use in said is the uh, substitute command so you're probably really familiar and you understand what this is going to do um, I only want to substitute R for B on lines between 2 and 3 on these two lines well I can feed it 2 comma 3 right if you watch my range video you understand that um, I could also do something like slash red to line 3 or to sorry the end of the file or to else and basically what the, what, what how this operates is if you use a search pattern for part of a range it'll find the first occurrence of that word in the file if it's before the comma if it's after the comma it'll find the last occurrence of that word so it'll find the widest breadth uh, range that it can but let's just use two or three for simple two to three for simplicity's sake um, so you know what this is gonna do right this is gonna change this to this however let's say that we only want to show the lines that we change so we only want to show lines two and three we don't want it to print the other lines well one way we can do that is we can use the dash in flag and then we can use a brace expansion and basically what the brace does is it allows multiple commands to be operated on this range so it allows us to do multiple commands on a range given because ranges really operate kind of like an if statement in said so it's grabbing the first line right and then it's operating all the commands between the quotes but when it gets to a range like in this instance it's between two and three it's saying is the current line between two and three no so move on to the next one right but when you have a brace expansion it's going to operate all of after it matches and says yes we are between lines two or three it'll operate all of these uh, commands before moving on so I think you get that so if I operate if I use this command it will only show me lines two and three right if I only wanted to show lines that uh, were substituted on there's also a P flag at the end of S which is a little bit different it's not it's not operating the same way because this is a special flag uh, just for the S command but you know just FYI there is a way that you can only show the lines that were substituted for so that's that's pretty much the foundation of said and it gets a lot more complicated I'll tell you there's you, you can make it as complicated as you possibly want it's a Turing complete language when it comes down to it people do calculus in it and solve Sudoku puzzles and all kinds of stuff um, but it's not really useful for that use it's just interesting for that use but I'll try to find ways to make it applicable as we're going through and hopefully you will tune in for the rest of the series I hope